everyone, this is Rocco coming back at ya. We are off to go visit a few friends. This is going to be our standard curvy mountain road test. Let's go ahead and enable full self drive now. I'm going to have to disable it here once we get to the highway because we're not taking the highway. We are skipping through and going through Saluda to make this trip. I haven't done this one, I think, in over a month in terms of uh, the in terms of the uh, route, um, doing an update. We'll probably do it again with the next version that comes out, um, but it'll probably be a few weeks for that. Yeah. Hope everyone is having a fantastic day today. Uh, this is actually Mother's Day, so I hope all your uh, mothers are doing well out there. Uh, but yeah, we're going to see how this drive does. That was not a disengagement. We're just gonna skip past skip past the highway here. And then we're gonna re-enable it. Okay. Let's see if it tries to stop this yield. It probably will. I'm just gonna push it through because this is a yield, not a stop sign. And we're also going to need to make sure the speed stays down because it's 20 mile an hour up here. Again, that is a complaint for me personally. I just wish it would read the speed limit signs beforehand. Perhaps that is a relatively easy fix. They're just not focused on it right now. Okay, not sure why it's turning the blinker on. Like it's full blinker. Like it's not turning it off. What's it? <laughs> okay. Um, wait a second, I didn't know Saluda had an electric vehicle charger right there. I'm gonna have to add that on plug share. We're gonna have to look back at our old videos. I don't know if that's always been there before. Um, if you didn't know, uh, and you have a Chatamo adapter, Saluda just to opened feet, last week or a couple weeks US ago. Um, a, uh, Fast DC fast charger at the gas station we passed um, right across the highway. There's a DC fast charger for CCS and Chatamo, uh, two of them that just got released. So if you come to Saluda, North Carolina area, uh, you will get the opportunity to use that. Uh, assuming you have the adapter, whoa, it's turning really wide right here. It's the first time it's done that. I don't say it made it, but it's still a little bit wide. Okay, so it's still slowing down a little bit too much around the curves. Like it, in one mile, right on to West when I pr when I press the accelerator, then it speeds right back up. Um, but like right now, is that's new behavior with this version. It seems to speed right back up. Also, as you can pr probably tell, this is a freshly paved road. This is the first time I've been on this since it got paved. Um, I didn't even know it was getting paved, but that's awesome. Um, the lines are very clear. And I think that does help uh, that the lines are uh, extra clear, especially they fixed some of the potholes. Like right here is a big one. Uh, that's fixed now. And so you don't really have to worry about uh, getting in the wrong spot. Of course, we got a car cutting out in front of us. Handled that pretty well. Could have decelerated a little bit more smoothly, but again, the car cut out in front of us. So what are you gonna do? Also, speed limit is always wrong right here. It used, again, it used to be 55 on this road, and now it's 45 tops on this road. It's just too fast. Yes, having the lines fixed right here helps on this corner quite a bit. Because it would always try and cross the line. Not every version, but some of the versions would cross the line there. Uh, or get too close to the line. So if it was an oncoming car, you might have to disengage. But having the lines repainted definitely helped for sure. This is good. It's maintaining speed around that corner, which it should. 
40 mile an hour is, to me, living in this area is very comfortable going around these curves. That, I think, slowed a little bit too aggressively, but um, it's still not bad. The problem, when around these type of curves, you slow down and speed back up a lot. It causes motion sickness, at least for me it does. Um, and so what I prefer is the car kind of maintain like a medium speed instead of like going all the way up and all the way back down. I'd rather just you know not go up the full speed and not go down as much. Uh, and it makes it a much more pleasant experience. Uh, see, this is where the lines need to be repainted. That being said, it's doing good. It's actually doing better than it did previously on this section. Considering how terrible the lines are. I don't I assume they're gonna be repaving this at some point on uh, this summer. But um yeah the lines are very faded on this road. Fun fact, this is the road right here where I took driver's training. This was the like I guess curvy mountain road test um, that we did for driver's training in high school. Um, we went up and down the, I really long, I think I only went up and down it once. But um, it's a good road. Uh, there's a flat uh, four lane divided highway uh, where this connects and then you just go down to the bridge we crossed and turn around and come back up. Um, it's an excellent road to test. It's like slower speed and it's nice curves. Which is part of the reason I'm doing it on this test. Just so happens to be a route in line with uh, I can visit some friends. That's why we use it. It makes a very good test route. And so I think it's good for a uh, driver's ed training. It should be good for full cell driving training as well. So here is our divided highway. We're gonna see if it can slow down appropriately and wait for any oncoming cars. It looks like we have missed all the cars, so basically if it just wants to cut across, we're good. Nice. Oh, wow, that got too close. Way too close to the end right there. That's thing, those type of things, I'm like, what do I do? I'm like, I didn't disengage, because it didn't, technically didn't have to. But I also... Yeah, it really accelerates getting on the on-ramp still. Um, so I didn't have to disengage, but I also didn't, you know. So it's kind of like a gray area. What was I looking for? When I get that close, I always get paranoid that I'm gonna, oh, no, no, no. Well, that was a disengagement, everyone. <laughs> there is a, it looks like a sweater in the road, and I wasn't gonna run over it. Uh, it could have been, who knows what was in wrapped around it, but uh, fortunately I had to disengage because the car did not see it. The car didn't try to go around it at all. I, I'm almost searching uh, the full single stack on highway. We'll see that and we'll adjust for that. However, we're not there yet. Um, full self-driving or normal navigating autopilot does not do that. Let's see how it does getting off the highway here. Always seems to have a problem slowing down quick enough here. In 1,000 feet, turn sharp left onto Greeville Highway. Now turn sharp left onto Greeville Highway. Okay, well, as long as we make this turn, that is it. What's it doing? Okay. I didn't see that bird or the garbage there and kind of freaking out. Interesting. Okay, so I made that. That was a single disengagement drive, everyone. Um, if we weren't going so slow, I would not have to go over that pothole. Um, but yeah, that was a okay drive. I'm not sure why we're set to 25 max, but... Um, Again, it would have been zero disengagements like normal. Uh, I saw a couple small improvements, and that could have been because of the lane lines being painted. It's hard to tell. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions for me, feel free to put them down in the 
comments down below. And we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone. Bye.